Hi students, welcome to this video session. My name is Samuel Chupu Emeka. In this video session, we shall solve inequalities with rational numbers. Please, it is very important that you view the prerequisite video, equations with rational numbers. This is like a continuation of that video, equations with rational numbers. So it is very important, it is highly recommended that you view that video prior to viewing this one. Okay, the additional things that we shall do here is that we are going to learn the concept of inequality. Inequality and then we shall uh, solve inequalities with rational numbers by clearing fractions. The same method we used for clearing for the equations with rational numbers by clearing fractions. That is the same method we shall use here in this video. And also we shall solve inequalities with rational numbers by clearing decimals. Again, the same method we used for equations with rational numbers by clearing decimals. Those steps are listed in that video. That is what we shall also apply here in this video. Then we shall uh, do some more problems on inequality uh, that deals with multiplication by a negative number, by a negative rational number, and also division by a negative rational number, just like you have it in the objectives of the lesson. We shall do it here. Then we shall do a real world problem involving uh, inequalities, uh, real world inequality problem with rational numbers. Alright? Now, let's talk about the basic concept of inequality. You have learnt that in your previous videos, but let us kind of refresh back in this video. When you talk of equality, equality, that is equation. Okay? Equality, equation. Equal. Right? That means the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. If I say that I am equal to you, that's equality. Okay? Left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Okay. Now, if I am not equal to you, that means I am either greater than you and you are less than me, or you are greater than me and I'm less than you. Now, inequality creates problems. And not just in mathematics, in real life, you know. With equations, it is so easy. You can solve it, you can check it. To make sure that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Now, but when you come in, you know, to, real, to inequality, inequality, meaning unequal, unequal, that means it is not equality. That means there is now somebody that is greater. There is now a side that is greater or a side that is less. Okay? And you have it that the greater sign, this is the greater than sign. Greater than. These are the ba basic signs here. Yeah? And then this is the less than. Now, it is also possible to have a greater sign and an equal sign. Greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to. Or equal to. We are going to use these signs in this video. And also here is less than or equal to. Less than or equal to. So, you know, and with the equation you just have equal. Equal to. Okay, you can say equal to. Or you say or equals. With the equation there is no problem. Now with inequality you have to really be careful. Just like you have to be careful with solving the mathematics in it. The same inequality creates problems in real life. I mean, a lot of problems is because of inequality. So, that bring that connection to real life. Yeah. Okay? That there is not equality. And because of that, you have to be careful on how you solve and check your questions. Now, we're going to check.
Some people don't really require checking and the objectives of the lesson does not. But I want to also I want to show you how to graph it and how to check it. That is an extra knowledge to you because along the line you will still do that. Okay? So uh, now there are two basic things you have to know here in inequality before we now uh, go ahead and solve these questions. There are two main things you have to note with inequality. The first thing you have to note, the first thing to note, first thing to note, with inequality, okay, if you look at your number line, if you look at, if you look at your number line, for instance, let's say if you look at your number line, Zero is in the middle, it is neither positive nor negative. It divides the it divides the numbers into positive and negative. To the right of zeros you have positive numbers, to the left of zeros you have negative numbers. Now you see as you go this way, it is descending order. This is descending order. If you move from right to left is descending order, from left to right is ascending order. We have done that in previous videos. And you see that 3 is greater than 2, 2 is greater than 1, 1 is greater than 0, 0 is greater than negative 1, negative 1 is greater than negative 2, negative 2 is greater than negative 3. Okay? As you go in descending order, from the greatest to least. Alright, this is the first thing you note here. When you come, when you look at this now, you see that 3 is greater than one right but let's say you now multiply by a negative let's say you multiply both sides by a negative or you divide both sides by a negative let's say you multiply you multiply three by negative one i multiply one by negative one you multiply three by negative one and then you multiply one by negative one so what do you have now? You have negative 3 and you have negative 1. This is, negative 1 is greater than negative 3. Okay? So negative 3 is less than negative 1. Because, you know, as you move in ascending order, ascending order you see from least to greatest. Negative 3 is less than negative 2. Negative 2 less than negative 1. Negative 1 less than 0. 0 less than 1. 1 less than 2. 2 less than 3. So, you, 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 you look at this. When you have 3 and 1, 3 is greater than 1. Positive. But when you multiply, or when you divide, because it goes, the same thing applies to division. 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3. And then 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. So, when you now have, look at negative 3 and negative 1, it is less than You've got to be careful here. The first thing to note, when you have something like 3 and 1, I have negative 3, negative 1. Here, 3 is greater than 1. But when you now multiply or divide by a negative value, the inequality sign is reversed. Take note of that. That when you multiply or divide by a negative value, the inequality sign is reversed. That's the first thing. That when you multiply or divide by a negative value, inequality is reversed. Take note of that. That's the first thing. Second thing to note before we start. Second thing to note yeah, is this. In the equation, it doesn't become a problem. But in inequality, it is a problem. Okay? In the equation, it's not a problem, but in inequality, it is a problem. When you have this, 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, right? And in this equation, okay, because of the equal sign, then 5 is equal to 2 plus 3. It's not a problem here. But in inequality, it is a problem, and I'll show you. Now, let's say that 2 plus 3 is less than 6. Of course, 5 is less than 6, right? So this means that if you have 6 here, that this is now 5 is less than 6. That means now if you now have 6 here, 
and you have five here. Okay? If the equation is going to be the same thing, eight four. But if you don't have six here and you have five here, the sign is reversed. The inequality is reversed. It is reversed. So, you said if you have two plus three, of course it's less than six. If you have six and you have two plus three, the inequality sign is reversed. So, these two things are very important to know when solving inequality. I will, I will write them again. I will summarize them again. First, when you multiply or divide, when you multiply or divide by a negative number, by a negative number, the inequality is reversed. That means if it was less than, and if it was a less than before you now divided or multiplied by a negative number, it will now become a greater than. If it was a greater than inequality before you now multiplied or divided by a negative number, it will now become less than. The second thing, when you rearrange, when you rearrange, what do I mean by rearrange? You make the left hand side to the right hand side and the right hand side to the left hand side. When you rearrange, the inequality is reversed. The inequality is reversed. So take note of these two things. Yeah. All right. Let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get it going. Okay. Number one. This is now inequalities with rational numbers by clearing fractions. So we have negative 3m, negative 3 over 4, negative 3m over 4, minus 1 over 8 is less than or equal to negative 1 over 4. I hope you know, don't get confused about the signs. Less than looks like L. Less than looks like L. It looks like L like the L sign. So the other sign is the greater than. So I mean some people still get confused about the signs. No. Less, whenever you see less than just know it looks like the L sign. Okay? Now this negative three M over four minus one over eight is less than or equal to negative one over four. Okay. Just like we said in the prerequisite video, in the previous video, when you want to see of rational, um, when you want to solve equations with rational numbers, that is the same way you solve inequalities with rational numbers, by clearing fractions now. If you want to solve equations with rational numbers, by clearing fractions, that is the, the same steps is what you use here. That's why the video, the prerequisite video is very important. So what we want to do here is, first of all, we find the LCD. What's the LCD of 4 and 8? Of course, it's 8. LCD of 4 and 8 is 8. So we use 8 to multiply all the terms. Okay, 8 times negative 3m over 4 minus 8 times 1 over 8 is less than or equal to 8 times 1 over negative 1 over 4. Okay? So 4 into 4 is 1, 4 into 8 is 2, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6m. 8 into 8 is 1, minus 1 is less than or equal to 4 into 4 is 1, 4 into 8 is 2, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And then you add 1 to both sides, okay? Now, you're just adding, you're not multiplying or dividing yet. It's, the problem comes when you multiply or divide by a negative number, remember? But this is just added anyway, and it's adding a positive sign, so it's not a problem. So. 
Negative 6n is less than my equal to negative 1. Right? Now, this becomes a problem. You have to do what? Divide by negative 6. So you divide both sides by negative 6. You divide both sides by negative 6. And what happens? Inequality is reversed. Inequality is reversed. So immediately, and look at the way it goes. Immediately you do this, you see, negative 6n all over negative 6, immediately you have to change the sign. It's greater than or equal to. You change it right here. Immediately you divide it by negative 6. You change it right away, so you don't forget. Negative 1 over negative 6. And then, our n will be what? Greater than or equal to 1 over 6. Remember, negative divided by negative is positive. So let's grab this. We draw a number line. 0, 1, 2, 3. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay, this is our real number line. And 1 over 6, we found that m is greater than or equal to 1 over 6, right? So 1 over 6 is about, is by 0 0.1 something. Okay, it's going to be between 0 and 1. Around here. Right? So we can draw this up. Put a circle. Now, is it an open interval or a closed interval? Because we have the equal sign. Because we have the equal sign, this is a closed interval. So we can shade this. We can shade it. And then we ask ourselves, we ask ourselves, what numbers are greater than or equal to 1 over 6? Are they to the left or to the right of this? We see that they are to the right, all these numbers. So this is the graph. Okay? That's the graph. And then how do you check this? Check. You write the main problem, negative 3 over 4, n minus 1 over 8, less than or equal to negative 1 over 4. Now, in this check, we see that our n is greater than or equal to 1 over 6. What is the easiest number to choose anyway? What, what is the easiest number to choose? Let m be 1. Let our m be 1. 1. That's the easiest number to choose. Anything? It, uh, now, because of the equal sign, you can choose 1 over 6. You can do that. Okay? But in checking, remember we want the left hand side to be, the, to be less than or equal to the right hand side. Because of the equal sign, you can still choose 1 over 6. Otherwise, just choose something that is greater, and the easiest one is 1. So, our left-hand side here is what? Negative 3 over 4 times n minus 1 over 8. And our right-hand side is what? Negative 1 over 4. So, you substitute here, negative 3 over 4 times 1 minus 1 over 8, which is negative 3 over 4 minus 1 over 8, right? Which is what? Negative 6 over 8 minus 1 over 8, which is negative 7 over 8. Now you see that negative 7 over 8 is less than, less than or equal to negative 1 over 4. And you can check it. You can see. Negative 7 over 8 will give you something like 0. Point, uh, you know, this is for the negatives, remember. Remember that negative 3 is less than negative 2. Negative, negative 7 over 8 is going to be like 0. Uh, 8 something. Yeah, negative 0. 0.8 something is less than or equal to negative 0. 0.25. Remember, negative 3 is less than negative 2 when it comes to negatives. So that means we are correct. Okay? Let's do the next one. Number 2. Four over five greater than two over three minus two over seven j. Now, like I mentioned in previous videos, when the variable is on the right hand side, the best thing is to rearrange. Now, when you rearrange, make sure the inequality is reversed. Okay? Now we say rearrange. That is make your left hand side to be your right hand side 
and then your right hand side to be your left hand side. Inequality is reversed. Remember? Is reversed. So we now have that 2 over 3 minus 2 over 7j is now less than 4 over 5. Okay? Now what's the LCD? LCD of 3, 7, and 5 would be what? Let's find it. Of course, they are all prime numbers, so you multiply. 3 times 7 is 21, times 5 is 105. They are all prime numbers. When you have only prime numbers, then the LCD will be the product of the prime numbers. So LCD is 105, right? So we multiply all terms by 105. 105 times 2 over 3 minus 105 times 2 over 7 times J is less than 105 times 4 over 5. 3 into 3 is 1. 3 into 10 is 3. 9, 15, 5. Okay, 7 will give you 3 times uh, 5 is 15. And then 5 will give you 21. So this is going to be 35 times 2 is 70 minus 30J is less than 84. Right? So what do you do? You subtract 70, subtract 70. So negative 30J is less than 14. Right? And then you divide. You divide both sides by the negative by negative 30 inequality is reversed. Okay? Divide both sides by negative 30 by negative 30 inequality is reversed. Okay? Reversed. So this will be negative 30j divided by negative 30 is greater than 14 over negative 30. So j is greater than what? Negative 7 over 10. After 7 over 15. 2 into 14 is 7. 2 into 30 is 15. j is greater than negative 7 over 15. Okay? Alright, so what does this give us? Let's now graph it and then we we'll check it. The next thing we do now is to graph it on a number line 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay? Negative 7 over 15 is going to be negative 0. Uh, 4 something, right? So negative 0 0.4 something. So that should be here, about here, right? Now, is this going to be a closed interval or open interval? Because there is no equal sign here, this will be an open interval. It's going to be an open interval. Then you ask yourself this, what numbers are greater than negative 7 over 15? Are they to the right or are they to the left? We see that they are to the right. So this will be the graph. All these numbers greater than eight. Okay, and it's going to be a closed interval because there is no equal sign here. Okay, then let's check this, right? If we check, the next thing we do is to check. We now have, we write the main problem four over five greater than two over three minus 2 over 7 times j. We write the left hand side, right hand side. Left hand side is 4 over 5. Right hand side is 2 over 3 minus 2 over 7 times j. Now, but what will you take as your j? Your j is greater than negative 7 over 15. So what are the numbers? What are the numbers that are greater than this? Easiest number. Easiest number is what? Let j be what? 0. That's the easiest number. Right? Let's shape it 0. So what do you do now? You now do 2 over 3 minus 2 over 7 times 0. 
So this is 2 over 3 minus 0, which is 2 over 3. So we see that 4 over 5, you will now see that 4 over 5 is greater than 2 over 3. 4 over 5 is 0 0.8. 2 over 3 is 0 0.66666666667. Okay? Now, the third one, the third question. One over three plus one over thirteen times f is greater than or equal to sixteen over thirty-nine. Okay, so our variable is on the left hand side, so we are good. Now what's the LCD? What's the LCD of three, thirteen, and thirty-nine? It's thirty-nine. So we multiply all terms by the LCD, thirty-nine times one over three. Plus 39 times 1 over 13 times f greater than or equal to 39 times 16 over 39. Right? So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 3 divided by 39 is 13. 13 times 1 is 13. 13 divided by 13 is 1. 13 divided by 39 is 3. 3 times 1f is 3f, so this is 13 plus 3f, greater than or equal to 39 divided 39 is 1, 1 times 16 is 16. Then you subtract 13 from both sides. When you subtract 13 from both sides, you now have 3f is greater than or equal to 3. And then you divide both sides by what? By 3. So f is what? f is greater than or equal to 1. Right? Okay. The next thing is to graph it and then we check it. So when we graph this, 0, 1, 2, 3. So f is greater than or equal to 1. Because there is an inequality here, I'm sorry, because there is equality here, because of the equal sign here, the interval will be a closed interval. So at 1, you show a closed circle. And then what are the numbers that are greater than or equal to 1? Are they to the right or to the left? They are to the right. So moves to the right. Okay, this is the graph. Now let's check it. If we check it, we have that 1 over 3 plus 1 over 13 times f greater than or equal to 16 over 39. What is the left hand side? What's the right hand side? Left hand side is 1 over 3 plus 1 over 13 times f. Right hand side is 16 over 39. Okay, so our f, what do you think our f will be? Let f be 1. We can say let it be 1, but let's use something that is greater than 1. Okay, With that, because of the equal sign, you can say let it be 1. If you use 1, it's going to give you, uh, it will give you uh, the same answer, 16 over 39. And it looks like it will not be an equation. Yeah, but let's still maintain our inequality. Let's use something greater than 1. We can use 13, so that 13 will divide 13, and it gives us 1. So let's have the 13. Okay? So this will be 1 over 3 plus 1 over 13 times 13. Right? 13 divided 13 is 1. So this is 1 over 3 plus 1, which is 1, 1 over 3. Okay? Of course, which is you know, 4 over 3, which is 1 point something, you know. Now this is 0 point something, this is 1 point something. So 4 over 3 is greater than what? 16 over 39. Greater than or equal to 16 over 39. So you, that's. 
Okay? That is for question 3. Let's go to question 4. Decimals. So we have 1.7W minus 4 less than 2.63. The same thing we did for uh, equations with rational numbers by clearing decimals. Those steps I listed in this video, in the previous video. Equations with rational numbers by clearing decimals. We are going to use those steps here. How many decimal places are here is 1. This one is none. This one, two decimal places. Okay? So the, the GDP, greatest number of decimal places is what? Is what? Two. You now do 10 to the second power is what? 100. 10 times 10, which is 100. So you now multiply all terms by 100. So this is 100 times 1.7 W minus 100 times 4 is less than 100 times 2.63 right so this will be now this is 1.7 times 100 you move two zeros forward this is 170 W minus 400 is less than 263 right so this will be you add 400 to both sides and when you do that, 170 W is less than what? 663. 663. Okay? So your W, you divide both sides by 170. Right? So your W will be what? Your W will be less than 663 over 170. And then, you know, like they gave it to you in decimal, we've got to give it to them in decimal too. So let's solve it. Let's divide and see what we will get. Okay, so this will be 170 divide 663. So I'll come down more. 170 times 3 is 3 times 7 is 5. 10, 510. So this is 510, right? 510. So this is 3, and this is 5, and this is 1, right? So I put, this would work, I put decimal and I put 0 here. So 7, 170 times 10 is 1700, so I come down more. 170 times 9 is what? What? 17 times 9, 9 times 7 is 63, 9 times 1, 15, so this is 9, 3.9. No one. Great. So this is 3.9. So W is less than 3.9. W is less than 3.9. Okay? Now let me graph it and then we check it. So, when we graph it, W less than 3.9, we now have 0 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? So, 3.9 should be about here, okay? Now, it, there is no equal sign, so because there is no equal sign, Excuse me. Uh, it will be an open interval. And then what numbers are less than 3.9? Are they to the right or left? To the left. Okay, so it moves this way. If you can see, provided you do the variable, I don't know whether you've observed this, when the variable is always on your left hand side, right? Whatever this sign points, whatever this sign, not sign, whatever the inequality points, you move there when you graph. 
But you make sure that your variable is on the left hand side. Yeah. For this to work. Okay, so let's check, right? So in checking, we have 1.7w minus 4 less than is less than 2.63. Left hand side is 1.7w minus 4. Right hand side is 2.63. So what is our W? Let our W be what? Let the W be what? What is the easiest thing we can use? Zero, of course, zero. Because this means we can use anything here. So the easiest thing we can use is zero. So 1.7 times zero, then minus four. So zero minus four is minus four. Minus four is less than 2.63. And you dance, you know. Yeah. Okay. The next one is uh, five. Question five. Two is greater than negative one point six b plus ten. So the variable is on the right hand side. So we need to do what? Rearrange. And when we rearrange, the inequality is reversed. Okay? So we have, we rearrange. Rearrange means what? Make your left hand side to be your right hand side. And your right hand side to be your left hand side. <coughs> inequality is reversed. Okay, so we now have that negative 1.6b plus 10 is less than 2. Negative 1.6b plus 10 is less than 2. We subtract 10 from both sides. That gives us that negative 1.6b is less than negative 8. And then you divide both sides by negative 1.6b, inequality is reversed. Divide both sides by negative 1.6, I'm sorry, by negative 1.6 to isolate the, okay? Inequality is reversed. Inequality is reversed. So this means that negative 1.6b divided by negative 1.6 immediately, reversed immediately, immediately, greater than Negative 8 divided by negative 1.6. So this means that V is greater than what? Negative 8 divided by negative 1.6. Negative divided by negative is the positive. A divided by 16. Because this is like 80 divided by 16. Right? And that's, um, that's 5. V is greater than 5. Okay, so let's let's uh, graph and check it. Let's graph and check. So we have that in our graphing it. This is our real number line: one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. V is greater than 5. And the 5 here comes up. Is it a closed or open interval? It's going to be open because there is no equal sign. And then what numbers are greater than 5? They are to the right. To the right. Okay? Are we correct? Let's see. We, we write check. We write the main problem, 2 is greater than negative 1.6b plus 10. What is our left hand side? Right hand side. Left hand side is 2. Right hand side is negative 1.6b plus 10. And then, let's have v. What do, let's be any number that is greater than 5. Let v is, what's the easiest one we can use? 10. 10, so that this will 
be, you know. We want to use numbers that will make it easy for us to get integers. Okay? So let's be with 10. So this is negative 1.6 times 10 plus 10. And this is negative 16 plus 10, which is negative 6. As you can see, 2 is greater than negative 6. So we do what? Okay. All right. Next one. Negative 5 over 2k greater than 5 over 4. Now, in this case, you can use the LCD. You can also use multiplicative inverse. This is a one step inequality, just like you do one step equation. You can use multiplicative inverse since it is a one step inequality. You can also do what? Use LCD, whichever one you want. To. Or what about we use both of them? How about it? Okay. Now, if we use multiplicative inverse, then, we, then, it, then it's going to go like this, okay? The variable, the variable is what? Is k, the coefficient of the variable, the coefficient of the variable is what? Negative 5 over 2. The multiplicative inverse, multiplicative inverse, please view this video that we did. The multiplicative inverse of the of what negative five over two is what negative two over five. So we've got to multiply. We multiply both sides by the multiplicative inverse. Since we're using that method, yes. Yeah. So if you do that, what will it be? It will be negative 2 over 5 times negative 5 over 2k greater than negative 2 over 5 times 5 over 4. And when you do that, when you multiply that, multiply both sides by negative 2 over 5, the inequality is reversed because you're multiplying by negative. So this is multiplying both sides by negative 2 over 5. And immediately you do that, the inequality is reversed. So this will be less than. Right away. It's going to be less than. Inequality is reversed. Once you do it, you reverse it. Immediately. You reverse it in that step. That step that you do it, is the step you reverse it. Right away. So this will cross out 5 divided 5. Negative times negative is positive. 2 divided 2. So we have that k is less than 1. 5 divided 5 is 1. 2 divided 2 is 1. 2 divided 4 is 2. k is less than negative 1 over 2. And how do we graph this? How do we graph it? We graph it. Okay, you know what? Let's, let's do it the second method and then we graph it. How about this? We graph and check it. Now this is the first method using multiplicative inverse. We can do it another way using LCD. If you are using LCD, this one is multiplicative inverse. If you are using LCD, then you negative 5 over 2k greater than 5 over 4, LCD of 2 and 4, of 2 and 4 is what? 4. So you multiply 4 times negative 5 over 2k Greater than 4 times 5 over 4. 2 into 2 is 1. 2 into 4 is 2. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10k. Greater than 4 into 4 is 1. So negative 10k greater than 5. Negative 10k greater than 5. You now divide both sides by negative 10 and the inequality is reversed. So from here, Divide both sides by negative 10. Inequality is reversed. 
Okay? Inequality is reversed. So you have that negative 10k over negative 10 is less than 5 over negative 10. So k will be less than k will be less than negative 1 over 2. Positive divided by negative is negative. Then 5 divided by 5 is 1. 5 divided by 10 is 2. So the same thing, the same. Two different methods will get the same answer. So what do we do now? Let's graph it and then we check it. Okay? So. Let's graph it and then we check it. When we graph, k is less than negative 1 over 2. k less than negative 1 over 2. Okay, so we have 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Negative 1 over 2 is 0 0.5. Negative 0 0.5 is in the middle here. Is it a closed or open interval? There is no equality sign, so it is an open interval. Now, what direction should it move? Left or right? Left. Because all these numbers are less than negative one half. So it moves here. All the numbers here are less than negative 0 0.5, negative 1 over 2. Okay? So this is the graph. Now let's check it. Let's check it. We write the main problem, negative 5 over 2k, greater than 5 over 4. Left hand side, right hand side. Left hand side is negative 5 over 2 times k, right hand side is 5 over 4. Okay, so our k now, let our k be what? What is what's the easiest thing we can choose as our k? We can choose negative 2 as our k. So it will cross out. And negative times negative will be positive. So let our k be negative 2. Right? So this is negative 5 over 2 times negative 2. 2 divided 2 is 1. Negative 5 times negative 1 is 5. So you can see that 5 is greater than 5 over 4. See that? 5 is greater than 5 over 4. Okay? Alright. The next one, number 7. Number 7, question 7 says, negative 7j is less than or equal to negative 49. You can use multiplicative inverse here, yeah? or you can just say, divide both sides by negative 7. Inequality is reversed. Okay? Instead of using multiplicative inverse. Because in this case, it will take some time if you're using multiplicative inverse. So you can say, divide both sides by negative 7. Inequality is reversed. Inequality is reversed. So this means now, negative 7j divided by negative 7. Immediately you divide it, you reverse it right away. It's now greater than or equal to negative 49 over negative 7. So this will divide, this will cross out. Negative 7 divided by negative 7 is positive 1. So leaving you with j. j is greater than or equal to what? 7. Negative 49 divided by negative 7 is 7. Okay, the next thing we do is to do what? We graph and we check. So let's graph it. Now when we graph it, have a number line. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay? So, 7 on 7, put a circle, 
Is this going to be a closed interval or open interval? It's a closed interval because of the equal sign. Because this includes, it's closed because it includes 7. Okay? And all numbers greater than 7 are to the right. So, it goes like this to the right. Right? And then when we check it, if we check, the main equation is what? Negative 7j less than or equal to negative 49. What is our left hand side? It's negative 7j. What is our right hand side? Negative 49. Now let our j be what? Our j can be 7 because it's closed also in 7. It includes 7. But that will give us an equation. If we use 7, then 7 times negative 7 is negative 49. And negative 49 is still less than or equal to 49. It's still less than or equal to negative 49. Because that's the equality sign. But let's choose a number that is greater than 7. What number is easiest? You can use 8, 9, 10, whichever one. 8. Right? If j is 8, then negative 7 times 8 is what? Negative 56. Negative 7 times 8, and that is negative 56. So we find out that negative 56 is less than or equal to negative 49. Remember, in the negatives, this is correct. Okay? And then once we, once we know that we checked it right and got it, we do what? Okay, the last but not the least, the last but not the least is the real world problem. And this, you know, this is according to the Alcos, Alabama Course of Study Standards. As a salesperson, you are paid $60 per week plus $4 per sale. This week, you want your pay to be at least. $150 at least. Write an inequality for the number of sales you need to make and describe the solutions. Okay. First of all, in, the, in this question, you have a fixed weekly salary. Well, a fixed weekly uh, money that you're paid. Fixed weekly salary that you're paid, right? And that is what? 60 bucks. So, the fixed, you have a fixed, fixed pay, and that is 60 bucks. Fixed weekly pay. This is weekly pay. Weekly pay, you have a fixed pay, and that is 60 bucks a week. You're guaranteed 60 bucks every week. Okay? Now, you can also earn some more money, and that is per sale. This is like just like a commission. Imagine, like if you're working as a salesperson in a Hyundai or Honda or Toyota, okay, or Chevy um, uh, uh, Ford company, Ford, okay. If you 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 have a fixed pay and then you make commission sales. So per, per, the number of sales determines how much commission you get. Okay? In this case, you make $4 per sale. So the more sales you, 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 you make, the more commission you get. The less sales you make, the less commission you get. So this is not fixed. It's a variable pay. It's not a fixed pay. Okay, is a variable pay. Variable pay. And this variable pay is four dollar per sale. So that means that let 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 the number of sales because we don't know the sale. That means the sale is a variable. Let the number of sales be uh, S. S. So the variable pay is four dollar per pay uh, per sale per sale. So this is four dollar times s, and this is four s. Four s. If you make one sale, you get four dollars. You make two sales, you get eight dollars. Make three sales, 
you get uh, twelve dollars. You make four sales, you get sixteen dollars. So it is variable. It is not fixed. It just depends on how many sales you make that week. Okay. You've looked at your weekly uh, take home pay. You know your weekly gross pay. You know your weekly gross pay. And of course, the more gross pay you have, the more gro the more net pay you you take home. The more take home pay you get. So, but you want your gross pay to be at least one hundred and fifty dollars. Your gross pay is just the money that you're supposed to make without tax. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, you want it to be at least one hundred and fifty dollars. Now, we have a word here. At least, at least. Okay, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna kind of get a bit. At least, at most, just exactly. Okay, this two means the same. If I say, please, can you give me at least five dollars? Okay. It means you can give me five dollars, you can give me six dollars, you can give me seven dollars, you can give me eight dollars, you can give me two hundred dollars. But the minimum should be five dollars. Least the least amount should be five dollars. If I say, can you give me? Please, can you give me at least five oranges. The minimum should be five. You can give me five. You can give me six. You can give me seven. You can give me eight. Okay. So at least five dollars means. It should be greater than or equal to five. The minimum should be five, at least. At most, five dollars means the maximum should be five. If I say, may you please give me at most five dollars. You can give me five dollars, you can give me four dollars, you can give me three dollars, you can give me two dollars, you can give me a dollar. So this means less than or equal to five. That is what at most means. And then just five dollars, or exactly five dollars, is just five dollars equal to five dollars. So this is the what you you know kind of wanna know about at least at most, and then just or exactly. Okay. So coming back to our problem, you know, the question says you should describe your solutions. Now. You now see that your weekly pay is both the fixed pay and the variable pay. Okay, so the, the, the weekly pay is the fixed pay and the variable pay. So your weekly pay, your weekly pay is equal to fixed pay plus variable pay. And this is what you want to be at least $150. This is what you want to be at least $150. So this will now be uh, 60. Now the weekly pay. The weekly pay, of course, in this case, is the fixed pay is 60 plus variable pay is what? 4S. So this 60 plus 4S is what you want to be at least one hundred, one fifty dollars. You see, the, you see how it goes now. The sixty plus four S is what you want to be at least one hundred and fifty dollars. So it's greater than or equal to one fifty dollars, right? So now, what will it be? You subtract sixty from both sides. So you have that four S is greater than or equal to what ninety. $90, right? Now you ask yourself, can you, uh, you now divide both sides by 4, right? So S, the number of sales now will be what? Now 4 divided 90, what does 4 divided 90 give us? 4 divided 90. 4 divided 9 is what? Uh, 2 times 4 is 8, then 10. 4 into 10 will be what? Uh, 2 again. 
times 4 is 8, then 2, then 4 into 2 won't go, you put points, you put 0, 22.5. So S should be greater than or equal to 22.5, the number of sales. Okay? But you need at least what? Because with 22.5, that means you will get the 115. But I don't think that's 22.5 sales. You should, the sales should be integer. Okay? It should be an integer. It should be, an, it should be a whole number. Okay? So the, uh, you need at least 23 sales. You need at least 23 sales. You need at least 23 to make 23 sales. You need to make at least 23 sales. You need to make at least 23 sales. Yeah. Even if you have 22.1 here, you've got to make at least 23 cells. And if you make 23 cells, that means times 4. 23 times 4 is what? 4 times 3 is 12. 1, 4 times 2, uh, 8 plus 1, 9, 92. Then plus the 16. Okay, that should be 152. Yeah. See, I lose that. Okay, thank you so much for listening, students. And you have a great day.